You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, welcome to another awesome episode of Vigilantes Radio. I am your host, Dini Mussolini, and we have a very, very special guest for tonight's episode. So you guys definitely want to stick around for that. There are over 35,000 of you guys right now in our chat room, on the phone lines, Google Hangouts, Skype, the browser, all of the plugins that we use to run these episodes. You guys are filling them up, and I appreciate that greatly. So the simple things are the most powerful. Anyone can devise a complicated solution to a problem. The true genius is able to find a simple, elegant solution solution to gain an aptitude for simplicity we must experience life differently we must look not for complex hidden meanings but rather for what is really there we must accept on faith what our senses and sensibilities tell us we must shut out the noise of anger envy regret worry and deception to experience the quiet power of simplicity Simplicity lives in beauty and in honesty. Simplicity can encompass the whole world without being consumed by it. Accept what is for what it is, and you attain the power of simplicity. Take that from me, Dini Mussolini. That is my word, and word is bond. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Yo, hello, and welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Music, or the book, or film, or even the business, where we dive into the minds of the people who create these marvelous things. It feels so good to be back with you guys once again. Big ups to my folks who are indigos, crystalline, or the star seeds. For my vigilantes audience family, for my hooligans, and shout out to my people who are vegetarian or vegans. If you're in a struggle like me, <laughs> we are averaging over 37,000 live listeners, and we've been at this for five solid years. I appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey, and we are still evolving, baby. It is all because of you, most definitely. We are are the people who have dedicated their lives to music, spirituality, business, literature, art, films, and research in every aspect. And we want to allow you an opportunity to tell your story. Man, we've had celebrities on our show from Grammy Award winning artists, uh, nominees to actors, comedians, CEOs, technology revolutionaries, visual artists, from authors to professors and vampires. Or people who think they're vampires. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Come on our show and talk to me. So check it out to book your interview or to appear on my other show called Skeptics. Email me at vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. And that's V as in Victor. We hope to get the stories behind these unique people and give them a chance to tell their truth to us and the universe. That is Vigilantes Radio Soul Purpose. You know the number to dial 701-801-9813. 
Share that number with your buddy right now and tell them to tune in to connect with us or our guests. Or you can hop in the mix directly from our website, which is only one media group.com. Right from the home page, you can slap that go live button and you'll be here live in the mix and in the chat room with all of us. So feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here. But only as time permits, sometimes my guests and I talk entirely too much. And as always, all episodes are available for free download and you can grab them from either spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes player.fm youtube any app from the google player itunes store or over at our website and that goes for every single episode that we've ever aired well all right all right all right tonight's interview is the felicitas interview and again i'm your host Diddy mussolini it's not every day that you'll get to tune in to an interview with an artist that shoots for the moon yet stay incredibly down to earth seriously i've had an incredible time researching felicitas she creates no illusion about who she is and why she does what she does there's an incredible intelligence in her approach to the game and she's becoming more relevant today than ever before and with that, let's go ahead and welcome her to the show. Felicitas, how are you doing? You're now live in the midst with all of us. Hello. Finally. Finally, yes. Happy holidays. <laughs> and happy holidays to you as well. So Damn. how's it going over there? Oh, it's going pretty great. Uh, just celebrated uh, Xmas. Uh, with the oh. family, had a, had a lot of family over, so it went well, playing games and stuff, so, you know, kids Great. happy, I'm happy, yeah. Mm. I mean, Xmas without family, I mean, I think it's not Christmas at all. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm not too much of a holiday person, but um, I enjoy when the family gets together. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, how, how was your holiday? fine i mean it's going on smooth and time for me to relax away from yeah. studies a bit i mean write more music just sitting around okay sounds like the life mm-hmm. all right so first things first um let's talk about you let's talk about your life journey so where, where does the story start it all started in Africa and about three, four years ago after high school, mm -hmm. I had to, around 19 years, I had to move to the capital city, Yaoundé of Cameroon and to live with my elder sister and then probably think of what I would do with my life after that. So there I grew up as a Catholic Christian and, you know, a church goer, go to church every Sunday, but then prayers was never something in the circle that I could, I gave too much importance to. While living with my sister, I became part of Dear Revival Church. And from there, I, I had a drastic change. A lot of things happened to me that were cannot even explain but I know that God was preparing me for a particular purpose something I still did not know at that time and there I was I decided to take on this Italian program I was like oh I really wanted to study abroad first I wanted to move to the US but then I said you know what let me try something new I didn't want to just put all my focus on studying in the U.S. and let other opportunities pass me by. So while I was contemplating on the options, I came across Italy. And I had to study the language. So I got certified Italian as my third language, as a foreign language, because I speak uh, English and French as um, I grew up with those two. So after that, in uh, 2015, I had an interview and then I got here. About a year or two living here as a student, I getting to see life 
in another dimension, a different culture, different people. I mean, before now, I had, I was, I lived all my life in Africa, haven't traveled, mm-hmm. traveled out. So it was something that was completely new. And without family, I knew I was totally independent. I was on my own and I don't have like any physical support apart from my family back home. So I mm-hmm. no new friends, no nothing. When I got here, I knew I had just, it was just me and God in everything that I had to do. So in school and with everything that went on last year in my life, the changes, meeting new people, get, trying to get used to the culture and adapting to where I have to be for probably the longest time. Last October, I, I had a trance. I had a trance, it was uh, or on the 6th of October, breaking uh, 7th. I mean, I have this habit of praying at I mean, ever since I gave my life to Christ and I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I have this habit of fasting like every month. And during this period, I try to pray at midnight because I just love the quietness and I love the concentration. I know that, okay, you know what? This is me alone and my God that is standing before me right now. So I get to do all what I can do alone at, at home. Right. And on that seat night, that fateful night, I was, well, during the day, I was down the entire day. I felt really, really bad. I, I felt so lonely. I got, it got to a point that I started thinking about family, how, imagining how life would have been if I decided to study in Africa and, mm-hmm. or maybe move to the U.S. because I have a family there. And I was like, you know what, no, I don't want to think about these things. I think God brought me here for a purpose. I think being alone and independent, he wants to show me something, something that I would not probably see if I was with my family, if I was living with people. You know, being around your brothers and sisters, you get so much distractions that you don't worry too much because, you know, you know, in one problem or the other, you have a shoulder to lean on. But here, knowing that I, I was alone, I knew that if it is not God, then there is no one else. So on that sixth night, I, when, I, when I came back from, from, from school, I slept and then well, I sleep with my Bible on my chest. And, and most of the time when I do that, especially when I'm fasting, that's the period that I get songs, I get melodies. I get. I want to write about something. I want to, something new comes to my spirit. So I slept and I woke up at midnight. I I started praising and worshiping, and then I got into my prayers. I was in a completely told. I was in a totally different world. At one point, I I I couldn't feel it, but then that I was in my room anymore. I knew that it was something different. The, the, I felt the aura of someone around me. And when I opened my eyes, I mean, there was nobody there, but I knew there was someone standing. So I felt this, 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 the presence of something big. I couldn't explain. But then it, uh, that thing or that person being around me gave me more, it took me more in my prayers. When I start praying, I just go, you know, I go slowly. I take my time, probably count my words. And before I know it, I'm, I've been praying for an hour or two. So that day I started praying. And when I felt the presence of that person around me, I got a trance. And in that trance, I saw myself singing. And I had a, it was, I was singing to an audience, a very big audience. And I could tell that I could tell because most of the words I was saying in that song, there was like Jesus at every line. So Mm -hmm. I couldn't really, I couldn't really, when I stopped praying, I could not really uh, understand what was happening. I didn't understand at that moment what the Lord was trying to tell me. 
So as I went on and on fasting and praying about it, I'm, most of the times I get visions, I get dreams that I don't take lightly because I get a, a lot of revelations from those. Right. So I prayed over it and I was like, Father Lord, tell me, I mean, make me understand this vision. There is a lot going through my mind right now after saying it. I have been someone, I've lived all my life like loving music. I used to tell my father that if I don't become a medical doctor, I would be uh, a fashion designer. I have something that had to do with moda, italiana. And if I don't do that, I would want to be a musician. I want to sing. But at that point, Earlier on in my teenage life, I didn't know what kind of song I wanted to do, what genre. But I loved Beyonce. I still love her, you know. I would sing her and dance single ladies when it came out all around <laughs> the house. And my father would walk in, see me on heels. You know, he would just like pass by and pass by. He was like, you know, this child is probably crazy. But Beyonce has always been my favorite singer. I said to myself, if I were to sing, I would become a pop star, a pop artist. I wanted to be like her. I wanted to sing the kind of music. And I was also, earlier on, I'm 12, 13 years old. I loved Hannah Montana. I would always watch it. And see, seeing her sing, it gave me more reasons. I started writing songs when I was 12. But in those songs, I never sang any of them. I remember when I was 15 years old, I told my sister uh, when I went over for holidays, uh, the summer holidays at her place, that I wanted to sing. If she could, like, give me, like, get me registered, book me a studio. I have songs that I've written. I really want, I would like to, to record. And she was like, okay, we'll, we'll think about it. But then we went, one thing happened that led to the other, and that never happened. So it has always been a dream. Singing has always been a dream that has been like something that has been buried deep inside of me. And it had to take Jesus to, to realize that, to make that dream come to life. So after the trance and all the prayers, the Lord made me, underst like he made me understand that he wants me to sing. I mean, he's given me a great voice. He's given me everything that I need. I mean, I, I write songs. I don't need to go to anybody to tell, to tell the person, you know, write me a song. I'll pay you for this. You know, I do that myself. And he said to me that I want you to sing, but I want your music to be something that would tell the world about me. Something that will not only praise me or worship me, but would tell the world, tell the world of the gospel in another way, not in a way that everybody does today. And I said to myself, I was like, what? Gospel music doesn't sell. <laughs> that, no, that was the first statement that came to me. I was like, it doesn't sell. I'll never make money out of this. And then he goes like, what? He was like, so are you, like, are you trying to tell me that I don't, what, where I will put you, I will not exalt you. That was, those were my thoughts at that moment. I was like, I want to make things professionally, but I want music that will also sell, like take me to higher heights and give me lots of fans, give me a big, big audience. And if I want to be like Beyonce, I'm sure, I'm sure I would not get there as soon as possible singing gospel music. And we were battling with that in prayers. But he said to me, he assured me, you know what? You're not going to sing. Pro music will not be your only source of income. And indeed, it is not my only source of income. But it's going to be something that you're going to do from now on henceforth. And it's going to be part of you. You're going to grow old in it. And I assure you that with me, always, you're going to sing and make music that will bring people closer to me. That was the purpose. So... It was not, it's not about me making money. It's not about me uh, wanting to be a music star or, or getting fame or whatever. But I just want my music to, 
to like transfer a message to people out there, especially to girls of my age. I mean, nowadays girls go through a lot. And here in Italy, I see things of all kind. I mean, I see people, girls behaving. I would tell you, I can tell you right now that 80%, if not 90 of the girls that live in Italy, they don't believe in God. They don't believe that there is a supreme, supreme being up there that created you and that watches over you, that expects you to do something to please him, to live your life in a way that will glorify his name. No, they don't have that in mind. And if you try to talk to them, they will, they will ignore you. They will, you know, like, you know what? I've heard this so many times. So I said to myself, since I cannot talk to them directly because they'll probably ignore me, why don't I make music that they would love? People sing to all, all kinds of music this day, all kinds of songs, but without even knowing what it talks about, they just sing it because they love the song. I mean, like, what does that song tell you? What does it say? Does it give you a positive or negative vibe? Does it make you, encourage you to do something that you've never done before? Does it assure you that everything is fine when everything seems not to be? So I said, I wanted my music to, to have another attitude. Not just, I didn't want it to be any kind of gospel music, not the kind of gospel that people sing every day. I, want, I wanted music that tells the world about the Lord, but that also makes them know that being here on earth, your whole life is not, is not supposed to be about worshiping God. Everybody has a purpose. But just to know that there is God up there and that you have a purpose to accomplish, you have something to do to yourself, to him, to your family before you leave this earth. Music that will remind you, that will remind you always that in every difficult situation, in every problem, there is a solution. And if you don't have your brother or your sister or your mother or father to help you find that solution at that time, there is no friend around you. The only person you can turn to is God. And most times, even when you have your family around, you still need God to be able to find a solution to a problem. So I wanted my music to, to have that attitude, that attitude that tells you, praise the Lord, worship Him, dance to his word because most people today they know, they think that preaching the gospel is just about it's all about going to church and saying give your life to christ going up and down but no that's not how it's meant to be so many people think that if you are born again you have to be a virgin mary you know you just have to pray yeah, you have to pray all the time. I mean, of course, that's what the Bible says, to be alert, because the devil walks around like a hungry lion looking for who to devour. So you have to be alert at all times and pray. But in serving God does not mean you don't have a life. That's what people think. Does not mean you, you don't have to see the world, that you don't have to live your life to the fullest. On the contrary, when you serve the Lord, when you give your life to Christ and let him be your savior you get to live life in the fullest I mean without lack of anything you know that no matter what comes your way no matter the temptations there is a pillar that holds you and you can never fall so that's how serving the Lord is that's how living a life that God wants you to makes you feel you have this internal peace that the world can never give you. You feel the presence, you feel his presence. I mean, when you give your life to him, he sends down his Holy Spirit to just take control of you, to take you to another level. Mm -hmm. You always find peace. No matter the, the tribulations that come your way, there is always a source of peace inside you that tells you, you know what, it is okay. You don't need a pastor to come and tell you that. You, need, you don't need your brother or your sister, you don't need a friend. Once you are in the Lord, you feel those things. You get, you get a, like automatic assurance at all times that He is there. Don't worry about nothing. 
So that is how it all started. And that same October, around the end of the month, I, he gave me about six songs in a week. Like the songs in this album. I had them all in a week and all of them came to me at midnight. I was, whenever I sleep and woke up, I had those melodies coming into me and the lyrics. I didn't have to search to, to know what to write. It was just there. The lines were just flowing. And even until now, it has been a routine. So I was afraid that probably I would start and not know how to continue. But then no, God is faithful and he has assured me. He, every day he makes me understand that, you know what, this journey, this work that I have given you to do, whatever you need to do it, I will provide it. And that is how it has always been. From the finances right down to, to every single penny I have had to spend. I have not felt the burden to produ- in like producing this album, in releasing it. I have not felt it. Being a student here, I mean, you know, you have a lot to think about. Your, 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 your tuition, you have your house, you have other things to pay for. And an an added project that would have to cause you to spend more money, most students will not want to welcome the idea. I mean, they will be adamant. But then the Lord called and I had to answer. And so that is how everything started and here we are we have redemption out there definitely definitely oh wow that that is quite a testimony i was going to say a story but that's that's a testimony if i would say so myself an incredible journey of faith and putting your trust in god because i can imagine moving to an entirely different country is pretty scary alone it was it was but then the, the funny thing is I, I had no fear at all i just knew there was going to be a lot to worry about knowing that i have to live alone and not depend on anybody but there was no fear i was i remember telling my dad that i wanted to move out and he did not buy the idea but i was convinced that i had to go out because i i guess the lord was pushing me to to, to be here so I get to see him and experience how he works in another, in a different dimension. And if he did not call me, I mean, if I did not get this call from him, I tell you that I would have been a pop artist. I would have concentrated my music on that. That is if I ever had to sing without him giving me this vision. Um, was there anything that you did for uh, like self-taught when it comes to music? Did you teach yourself how to sing, or how did how did that work? No, I just I've never been to any music class or anything. I just did when I knew that I, I had to begin this project. I just I had to hire a vocal coach and to just get my voice to where it has to be. I wanted it perfect. But then getting a vocal coach initially added more expenses to the project and I said to myself, I would just do the exercises that I can do to keep my voice going and then I work on the album. So for the entire year that I've been working on the album, I've been like doing it by myself, no vocal coach. So um, I didn't study music, nothing of that sort. I am in my second year in foreign languages. Nothing to do with music at all. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I guess it was just inborn. I guess the the singing thing is just inborn. Did you hear what I said? No, I I think you you cut out. 
Oh, I said that singing. I I didn't I didn't need too much practice or because I I knew I had a great voice, but I just wanted it to be perfect. So I had to do exercises, vocal exercises, all the time to get it to where I wanted it to be. Okay, so self-taught, and uh, you just kind of jumped out there uh, and did exactly. it yourself without any help. Yeah, that's incredible. Wow, wow. So how many songs such have you put out there? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. What? Oh, such things, I'm like, such incredibility and amazing things can only happen when you have God beside you. I mean, on my own, I, I'm sure I would not be able to do anything. I agree. I agree. So, how many songs have you put out there so far? Eleven. Just Eleven the songs, songs of this album, Redemption. Yeah. Okay. So this I have is your 11 first songs. Album. Yes, this is my first. And I'm, I'm sure, I'm positive that it's the first out of billions. Hmm. So right now we have I have 11 songs out there in the Redemption album. Nice. And I'm presently working on a new project, so I will, I don't want to say too much about it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so what about Italy though? I mean, I'm not sure about the amount of Christian music coming out of Italy right now. Um oh, I don't know any. You don't have contemporary. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Italy is a country that uh, they still, the only music that's really like they love here, people, it's, it's rock. And, and if it's not in Italian, it may not interest people too much. So singing, religious music here. I mean, for a start, it's really difficult because you have a lot of people, people that do not even know about God, that they don't believe that He exists. So it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. But that's why when I decided to launch the album, I didn't want to, to concentrate on Italy because I wanted, given the fact that those songs are written in English, and we have just one song in which... Um, I have this, we, I had did this collaboration with an Italian rapper. So, mm -hmm. apart from that song that has Italian lyrics, the rest of the songs are in English. And here, yeah, I mean, the country is emancipating and people, people want to speak English, but not everybody will understand what you're saying if they're not English speakers and if they don't already have an idea about what you're trying to say. So I decided not to concentrate my the release here in Italy, but I wanted a place where everybody listening would know what I'm saying. And most of all, that's why I chose the U.S. Mm -hmm. Because I have most of my friends there and family, and I decided to concentrate the release and... The, especially the PR there. So right now, on the project that I'm working on, I mean, I have songs in Italian. I have songs in Spanish because um, Spanish is my first language in the university, and uh, with Polish. Mm, wow. Yes. So I am working on that project and I in this one, I mean, I want to like, I want to touch the world. I want to. I want to direct, uh, I want to be able to address people of, of, of different culture and, and different, different, di of different languages. So I don't want to, it's not going to be just in English this time. <laughs> it's going to be in all the languages that I speak. That is English, French, Italian, Spanish, Polish, Portuguese, German, and Russian. Wow. That's breaking a lot of barriers there. Wow. Language Exactly. Barriers. That's where the Lord wants to take me. You know, he said to me that, you know what, this is going to be like before you begin a journey. You need to you get on your mark and you get set and then you take off. 
in one of my prayers, he said to me that, don't worry. This is just going to be like, I'm putting you on your mark so you know what you have to do the next time. This is a start. There, there's probably a, so many things that you don't yet understand about about music, about how things work. And I must confess that ever since I started, he has been, I have had like help from all angles, like even from people that I don't know. They have reached out to me on Instagram and on Facebook, commenting when I released Invictus, uh, the single in April. I have this guy that reached out to me and he he was like, I heard Invictus and I want to work with you on your brand. I was like, oh, okay. I was overwhelmed, but I didn't know what to do. So, and since then we've been working together for over a year now. Mm-hmm. And there. So I've had like help from all angles. It's not been difficult at all. At first, I was, I was, I had fear that it's probably going to be too expensive for, for my finances and maybe I would not be able, I may start and not finish because it may take a while. But God has a way of surprising me, and right. He did. So right now, His grace, uh, His grace is taking me to like to a whole new level. I am like getting set, like I say, to take off, and I'm sure it'll be uh, it, in 2020. I just want to get over with my degree and give full concentration. On my music. Yeah. Um, what is the biggest surprise when you're building a potential hit single? Um, the biggest surprise would be... Well... I think it would be... Um, how that single, like how the reaction your fans would get when it's released, or do you mean before that? Yeah, yeah, before that. Okay, well, before that, I would say, I would say, especially for me, that someone like me that has not worked with, that has not been into music before, that has, that is, and like a starter. I would say that everything comes as a big surprise, but then the biggest would be, uh, I think, the, the, the changes and the, the work that you have to put in it. I, when I started, I didn't know that I had to put so much work and, and make every thing, every note to perfection. But then I just, in my mind, you know what, just sing this thing. I mean, sing it, sing it the way you, you, you wrote it. Mm-hmm. But I knew if I sing it like that, people would not like it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, had, there was, I had to make a lot of changes. And doing that on your own without someone telling you that this is what you have to do, this is what you have to do, it's, it's really challenging. It's yeah. really, really challenging. But then my... The DJ I work with, he has been he has been into music for like 10 years and he he gave me like he's been a guide to me so around him there were when i sang something and it didn't sound right he would tell me you know try to sing it this way i think that would sound better Hmm. so it was it was not easy but like i said we got you can do all things. I mean, I read the Bible always, and I just want to be sure of what I tell people. Of course, I can't preach without knowing His Word. And whatever I have to say about Him has to be the truth and, and nothing but the truth. So, and His Word says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And indeed, I can. I mean... Before I even came here, I did a two years program in, in fashion and design. And I have had like so many people reaching out to me, like they want this, they want that, this particular dress, they want this, they want this outfit. 
but I can't do that right now because of all the work I have going on. Right. So I just like, I think he has given me so many resources to be able to use to, to finance to my music and even do other things that I didn't think I would be able to do on my own. All right, guys, after the music break, it'll be time for our usual tradition. It is called the hot seat. And our fans love this part of the segment, of course, along with the actual interview. But the audience get a chance to hear Felitas provide us with some vocals. Maybe she'll sing for us, provide us with some poetry, uh, inspirational oh, speeches, wow. spoken word, jokes, stories. You never know what these creative minds and vessels will produce in the spotlight. So in a moment, we'll <laughs> find out if Felitas has what it takes to be put on the spot of test of her true artistry and maybe even some hidden talents. But for right now, we have Felitas with her song, Redemption, and we'll be right back. First, the school of ancestors, kill the protesters, defile the tradition, because we're black, all because we're black. Then the middle slaves, we put the ground and build the nation, give them a name, but they reward us with treachery, trickery, deception, and strip us of our name and lives. Because of them, their acts, we notch your anger and hatred deep in our hearts. But faithful are you, Lord, God Almighty. Forgiving us black love, a revolution and honest love that blows away our pain and put our oppressors to shame. Behold your black daughter and handmaid. I pray for divine intervention, for only you can find a solution. Accept our prayers, Lord, and begin us. You made us in your image and gave us authority to call the shots on you. Thank you. 
are back. That was Felitas with her song Redemption. I love it. I love it. I love her song. So, guys, your life is of your own choosing. Of course, by the decisions you make, you choose your thoughts, your level of physical fitness, your experiences, your financial situations, your surroundings, the people in your life. Your circumstances do not make you. Your circumstances reveal you. Look around you and you will see the results of your choices. Everything you have chosen has been for a reason and so at the core are your reasons. Moment by moment you make decisions which have a direct and effect on your life. For each decision there is a reason. It may be well considered and deliberate or it may be haphazard, hasty reaction, yet there is reason behind everything. That is why the why of life is so important. That is why positive, consciously chosen direction is so critical because your reasons for living do matter very much. And the actions you take moment by moment, they steadily mold your life. Take that from me, Denny Mussolini. Uh, that is my word and word is bond. But for right now, let's bring back the woman of the moment. Felicitas, so you're back live with us and in our hot seat. So what are you going to perform for us? Welcome back. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah, welcome I back. hate being put under hot shit. Oh gosh, and I did not prepare for this at all. But no. let's see. No, I did not. You didn't read my notes? <laughs> mm, no. No, man. But it okay. well, well, I just oh well no don't worry about it. I'm sure I can come up with something. All right. right now. I won't hold it against you. Okay. Let's see. What do I give to this beautiful people out there listening to me? Hmm. Okay. I think I would sing uh, or not one of my songs, but oh no. I'm gonna sing one of my songs, but it's just a just a short, short, short part. Okay, so I have I wrote this song uh, titled "Black or White." It's one of the songs in the album. I uh, in it I had to, it's a song that talks about uh, the differences that we experience every day, be because of our skin colors and. Uh, let me just uh, sing uh, the chorus to you guys. All right. Why this rules on race that never been? And why this views on race that never end? We live behind broken hearts, oh, since the sea they never met. Unity is the message lesson, black or white, let's all unite so we may be free like flying kites. I may be wrong or right, sister, I still invite us to embrace the glory inside. Let's take the fight against this racial plight. And break this rules unrest that never ends. My words may not be polite, but I know the future is bright. Don't be hard up, tight, black or white. So you're a knight, it's a human right. Why this rules unrest that never ends? Why these views unrest that never been? We live behind broken hearts, oh brother, see they never met. Unity is the message lesson, black or white. Let's all unite so we may be free like flying kites. I may be wrong or right, sister. I still invite us to embrace the glory inside. Let's take the fight 
against this racial plight and break its rules on rest that never ends. All right. There you go. All right. All right. I love it. Thank Let you. Every, yeah, you're welcome. Let everybody know where they can uh, connect with you online. Um. All right. You can like get to me directly on my website uh, www.felicitasmusic.com. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Felicitas, name of my page. On Instagram at Felicitas Official and Twitter at Felicitas Music. I, I mean, I like, I, I always reach out to my fans, especially they, when they comment or say something about a song they've heard and which tells them something. So I always use it as an opportunity to tell them about about God and you know go deep. So yeah, you can find me on these places. Awesome. For my music, I mean, you have the it's available on every platform. You have SoundCloud, you can find me on Spotify, on iTunes, and on Amazon. I mean, the album is everywhere, even on YouTube too. So the audio album has been uploaded there. You can listen, and I mean, I encourage people not only to listen to Redemption, but mm-hmm. I would want people to listen to to Black or White because. It tells a lot about about you being black, and I just I think it's time for us. We have lived in this notion of 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 discrimination for two, and it's getting worse by the day. I mean, who would have thought that in the 21st century you could still see so many people out there discriminating? In Italy, here it's just the worst because. You walk out every day and you find, you go to the restaurant, you probably don't want to, 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 to sit beside you because you're black or, or do this because you're black, let you touch them because you're black. But you know what? That is just, if we go on living with that, I mean, we've tried. We have people talk about uh, moving, emancipating from this, this thought of not, of not being of living together, getting united. I you know I usually I usually ask myself like if we don't unite now, it'll probably take an alien like aliens group of people to, to invade this world and make us know that we are one. Mm-hmm. I mean probably if we have like a, 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 we have to fight against robots that are not humans in, in, in like us, we would probably get to unite and know that okay we have one common enemy. And indeed, we have one common enemy, and that's the devil. Now, because we were divided, because we already discriminate a lot amongst ourselves, we give the devil an opening to use that and manipulate upon our lives, which is something we want to avoid. It is not going to get us anywhere. As long as the devil keeps manipulating upon us, manipulating upon our thoughts, we would never emancipate from, from, from this notion of being black or being white. I mean, we're one. If you take mm-hmm. out the color, put aside the color and look deep inside, we have everything similar. We have the same traits. We have the same organs in our body. We have everything. So the same. So I just, I, I think it is time. I mean, if not now, then when? If it's not now, when? And it's not only in family, not out there to people, strangers. It, you will still find racism in family. Many people say that it, it's, it's not really as it was before. Yes, but it's not even supposed to be there at all. So until we fight it to, to every single last person has been, has wiped off that thought in his or her head that because we're black or white, there is a difference. We have to be treated differently and we're not equal. Until we fight that thought, until we fight that notion, that belief, and, and eradicate it, like make sure it eradicates from this earth, from our human senses, and our, we would never ever enjoy completely what we are supposed to enjoy when we come together as 
brothers and sisters that we are. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And like you said, I mean, life is a choice. We have everything we see around us is a choice. You like that we have made and I don't think racism, being a racist can be imposed on anyone. It's a choice you make. So if you can choose to be, to be different towards your brother or your sister, towards the nearest person beside you, you can also choose to be indifferent and treat that person like a loved one, someone you, you, you have known all your life, even if you met that person for the first time. I'm not saying we don't have to be careful. We have to be careful because you don't know who is who. You, there's so many people who want to do good out there, but because of how others, how the devil, in fact, has used others to, 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 to make them, to put this fear in them that no, doing good would, would not like, do you any good. It will not take you anywhere. They become afraid of of expressing that true love they, they feel that they have for their neighbors and those around them but I just want to say that you can love without fear and do good and be you and nothing will happen I mean the devil can try to stop you and you know to hold you back to, 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 to make you think that being good to others is not going to bring you anything positive or good in your life. They will just underestimate you, undermine you, and not appreciate who you are. Forget about the appreciation you get from those around you. Think about the appreciation you get from God who sees what you're doing, who, who knows that you're giving a helping hand in the physical that people see, and even the ones that people do not see. Think about that. We should focus more on what God thinks of us than what God what, than what people think about us. It is because we worry too much about what people will say, how they will react, and how they will see us. You know, we we protect our image before man, but then we forget to protect our image before God, and that is why we're we're. We are perishing every day. Indeed, we are. So if we could just worry more about pleasing God and worry less about pleasing humans, because a human being can never be pleased. That is what is there. And I just pray that people like see that and, and, and get it into their head. A human being cannot be pleased because... You give, for example, girls especially, I mean, I'm a girl, I know that today I ask for something, you may give me and I, tomorrow I need something else. It's, that's just, we always have needs and we're always wanting more and more and more and more. So a human being, it is difficult to find one that won't be satisfied with just one thing. They always want more. They always strive to get more. Of course, it is a good thing to get more, but you want to know where to stop. You want to know where to sit back and say, you know what? Okay, I have. I think I've had enough. Let me let me put my focus on something else. Let me leave others go, and I have this. And let me let let others get it. You don't just want to keep getting it all the time. Why are there are people out there who do not even have? So I just we should. If we want to make heaven, because I know hell is real, if you all didn't know, we should focus more on how God sees us. Mm -hmm. I know so many people don't read the Bible, because to them it was probably written by man, it's just a story, Uh, but there is a lot of, there is a lot that we can get from the Bible, a lot, in fact, Every solution to every problem that we have in this life is found in the Bible. I noticed that ever since I started reading it so many years ago, and I have made it a habit to always read it. Even if I, I have read, there are some, verse, some chapters that I've read like a million times already, but then every time I read it, it sounds so new. It seems like it's the first time. 
because there is mm. always something new that something different that the Lord tells you from a particular uh, a passage you read a new message a new revelation so I think if we just if we could dedicate some of our time in reading the word of God and praying as we should then we would this world would be a better place we would have to see things in a different dimension and in in a whole new light and probably live our lives better than the way we're living right now right on All right, we'd like to thank you for being our guest tonight. I had an amazing time talking with you, and uh, you're welcome to come back anytime. Thank you. Now, I have to be the one giving the thanks. I, this is my first radio interview. Really? And <laughs> Yes, and it is, the feeling is such a great one. I am glad that you guys have given me the opportunity to to talk to people out there directly and I am honored so thank you God bless you and I am sure to come back definitely well you're most definitely welcome all right enjoy your night all right thank you so much mm-hmm. and good night to you too and right. uh, uh, a warm love to everybody out there, <laughs> to all those in the chat room. Thank you so much for, for having me. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. I am so grateful. God bless you all. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab that from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, any app that's on a Google Play or iTunes store, or our website. And that goes from every single episode that we've ever aired. If you'd like to request music or a particular guest or send something for me to play, email it to the radio at only one media group.com. If it's music, please label it by artist and title. Here's my disclaimer. We are genre free. We do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay, but facts alone. And actually, you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show. So deal with it. (laughs) Nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, as well as Spricker. We always follow back. That is the number one rule. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself and be absolutely great at just doing that. Avoid being too comfortable because you're messing with your potential when you do that. Peace and have a good night. And now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com.
This is a seventh sign regime. Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate exclusive.